Hey guys, back out in the shop tonight. Um, what I'd like to do is start by taking you through the process on um, how I made some doors for my miter saw station. I decided the other day to, on the long side, is just go with a couple big long shelves. I think in the long run, um, it'll be easier for me to kind of quickly grab things that I decide to put under there. I don't really have a whole lot of room in the shop for bigger items when I start getting new tools and things. Um, so I, the idea of building a bunch of drawers, I don't know what size things are, and I think it'll be easier on that side to actually just have a quick access point. Uh, the shorter side behind me, I think I'll stick with the drawers that I was gonna do and um, keep some of my smaller items in there. But what I decided on the doors is I've always wanted to try something new, so I kind of went with the uh, shaker style and I put a piece of quarter inch underlayment um, on the inside. That's what I had lying around. Um, I had some cedar here. It's not my first choice for it uh, because the, the router bits that I bought, um, the, this cedar is kind of brittle and it's stringy and it's really not the greatest to work with. And I just, I had three quarter inch stock and obviously it's not perfect three quarter. I mean, some of it's thicker in spots. So really traditionally you'd want, I would want to use hardwood moving forward um, and plane it down to the exact thickness I wanted to be perfectly flat. So obviously with the first set of doors, I'll show you here in just a minute, I had some issues with uh, things not quite aligning the way that I wanted them to, um, but all in all it came out fine. Um, always when I'm trying something new, I really like to do it for something that in the shop first, just so I can get the technique down and things and um, before I decided to possibly do any commissioned work with it and maybe things in the future. But um, let me show you real quick before we get started. Real simple, not hard. It was actually the first time I ever done it. So um, I just have some smaller hinges, got some handles, and just like I said, is some quarter inch paneling. On the inside, what I did is I added some poplar and this is, I didn't have a huge gap in between the doors, but I just decided to put something in there um, just to kind of hide the gap a little bit. Um, I have a magnet inside of here and there's a magnet on the station and it just helps keep the door closed a little bit. Um, but one thing I did have to do is, I don't know if you guys can see it, is on the end here, there's a piece of poplar. It's three eighths thick um, and I have two pieces here and I'll have to add one here. Um, I bought the wrong hinges. So there's a 3 8 um, dimension in there from the hinge to the surface. So um, I was kind of bummed out, but to fill the void, I had some poplar lying around and I ripped it and I got it to the, to the thickness I needed. And it actually turned out pretty good. So, um, and it kind of hides the whole two by four deal. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead. Uh, I already have my pieces cut. I already had them cut from the other day. Um, got my styles and my rails. So um, I'll get set up here. I'll get set up at the router table and show you guys kind of what I did. Okay guys, before we get started at the router table, I just wanted to kind of go through real quick on um, what I normally do just so I don't screw up um, getting it set up on the router table. Now. With cedar that I have here, there's a smooth side and a rough side, and I want the rough side out. Now with cedar, you could pretty much probably remember where you want your front and back, but if you have a piece of hardwood and you forget um, what you want. So what I like to do is I like to flip everything over, and I like to put a B for the back, and I like to put the arrows on what I want on the inside. Now, I didn't think that I would need to do this, and the other day, I'm kind of glad that I did because there was one piece of cedar that wasn't really rough on the one side and I actually was going to almost um, run it through the router the wrong way. But it's just something that kind of foolproof and because when you run down the router, this is the side that you're actually going to see. The side that you want is going to be face down. And then the arrows help me because this is the side obviously with the inside and then this is the side that I want run across on the router fence. So um, I'm going to get the bit set up and uh, we'll get started. 
Okay guys, I have my first router bit in and there's two different router bits obviously. You've got, there's one, I don't really recall what they, they name them, but I know there's one with the bearing in the, in the middle and there's one with the bearing on the top. Now, most people have their own preference. I prefer to do the styles first, which is to me is the shorter side. Now, um, I can run my uh, styles through, get both my ends on all the, on the, on the two, well, it'll be four in this case, because I got two doors. And then I can put this one in and then run all of the pieces through. Um, it's just more efficient to me, is what I found out. Now, one thing that I don't have here is a coping sled. And most people, what I was, when I was running this through, you gotta be really careful, obviously. Um, you can have some rocking and things, but I just found it, if I go really slow, everything worked out fine. But I do have um, a coping sled that I am looking at getting, and um, that'll definitely make the job easier. It'll run right on this track, and um, everything will be great. So to set this up, what I normally do is I bring my fence over, and I just want to make sure Put my, I put a flat ruler right on the bearing and I bring my fence until it touches. And I just make sure I lock it down. And that's it. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna run um, the styles through real quick and then we'll set up the other bit and we'll um, run the rails through. Okay guys, so I ran the styles through and all the ends are done. You can kind of see why cedar can be a pain. It's just really chipping and everything. It's really not the prettiest looking. Um, but that's where the coping sled will help in the future because I can put a scrap piece on this side and as I'm running it through, it'll take out, um, it'll do all the damage on the scrap piece and not my real piece. But again, this is for practice and this is to try and give you guys a little bit of what it takes to do this. So that being said, I loaded in the other bit and remember this is the one with the, the bearing on top. The one thing that you have to remember, this is where it can get, it's pretty easy to set up, but this tooth on the top part of this needs to be lined up. The top of that tooth needs to be at the top of this piece right there. I wish I could zoom in a little bit for you guys in the camera, but I'm not able to. Um, but I was kind of feeling with my finger. So, so yeah, that's, that's pretty darn good. Now I'm going to go ahead and use feather boards as well on my fence because it, when I have to run the rails through on this part as well, it'll, um, help keep down pressure. So I have to set up the fence and I'm going to do the same way before. I'm going to take the ruler, I'm going to put it on the bearing put it against the fence, lock it down and, and go. So I'm gonna get that set up and we'll run the first piece through and I'll show you guys how it's done. All right guys, got all the pieces through. Um, you can see that again using cedar it's a lot of chip out a lot of fraying um, but all in all it's good to go so all I do is I just make sure that everything fits and we go through and just make sure that we like what we see before we go ahead and cut our panels
Okay, guys. So, yeah, everything seems to fit. Obviously, if the pieces were completely square, um, it would fit a little bit tighter. But I'm not quite sure if I can get it great for you for the camera. But once we glue these, those joints are going to pull in tight. And one thing that you want to make sure is on the back side that um, it's flush. And these all fit good. That means my bits were set up good. Um, these actually turned out better than the first pair. Um, the first pair I didn't have the router set up very well and I had a, a material here and I just kind of cracked it away. I had to take a chisel and clean it up. So that was kind of a pain in the butt, but these fit good. So the next thing that I'll do is I have to just double check my measurements and cut my panels. And after that, then we just glue them up. Um, but tonight, um, duty calls and I've got some family stuff to do. So tomorrow, um, we'll get back at it and uh, get them finished up. So um, I have the doors have dried. Um, it's the following day. And so I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to throw these hinges on and um, we're going to go ahead and figure out where they need to go on the station. All right, so I have the one door up, you can see, and what I did is, after putting the hinges on, of course, I just laid my level across, made sure that part was level, and made sure I was level here. Um, but I don't know if you guys remember about me talking about putting some poplar here for the spacing. So I have to go ahead and I have a chunk of 3 8 poplar here the thickness that I need so I'm just going to go ahead and cut it and I'm going to tack it on here with a little bit of glue and some nails. Just a little bit of glue here. Nothing too crazy. I'm not going to get too fancy here. I'm just going to go ahead and do it by feel, just making sure that I'm on the edge here. Just pull this over. All right, so um, I have my piece in there, of course, and I just make sure that, take my torpedo level a little bit, make sure that I'm level there. Obviously, I have a gap, and I'm going to do the same thing that I did over to the other ones. I'm going to add a piece of poplar on the inside of each, but I'm not going to be too crazy on measuring gaps and making sure everything's completely even. It's just, again, shop furniture, and I'm just... Uh, making sure it's more effective than anything. So I'm just going to finish up putting in a couple screws on this side and um, we'll look at cutting our pieces for here and gluing those and putting on the handles. So if I didn't get my lines if I didn't get this completely lined up where I marked my lines, I just take some sandpaper and I just kind of rub the bottom a little bit because you can kind of hear it touching the bottom. It's not bad, so I'll probably just leave it, but um, I had to do that to the bottom one of the other, the first door. So I'm going to throw on this second piece and then um, I will get my fixture out and we'll throw on the handles. Okay, I got the doors on. Ready to put the handles on, and that is going to be it. I'm just going to use my Craig jig. I'm not really going to clamp it or anything. I have my dimensions set for the handles that I have.
Okay, guys, um, I appreciate you guys watching. I hope you learned something from this. Um, I'm still learning myself, so there's probably a few things I could have done different. Um, I actually had to come out and redo this part of the uh, video. My sound on my mic went bad, so I'm not sure what's going on there, but um, I had to kind of come out and re-record some things. Uh, but I do um, want to tackle the short side of this station and um, and then this thing for now will be complete. Um, as you can see, I got the long side. I started on the one drawer in on the bottom. I need to put faces on those and put a face on the big bottom one and I'm gonna call it good for now and then I can move on to something else. Um, we're kind of working on a, a remodel right now and um, we've been in the house now about 15 years so we've decided we want to kind of change some things around but you can follow a little along on that on Instagram. I started an Instagram account so I'm trying that out. Um, so I'm not able to come out and, and video much. I'm kind of in a rush after working all day and then having to uh, get inside the house and work on that. But again, thanks for watching guys and um, I'll see you next time.